You may be seated. Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Tenzing, how long have you been a full-time police officer? Uh, full-time, uh, spring of 2013 to 2015, so over two years. Several years. How many times have you pulled your service revolver? Uh, there's been several times. What caused that to happen? Uh, if we were doing a, there was a felony traffic stop involved, or uh, I, I pulled it once in Green Hills when a, a dog was charging at me, things, things of that nature. Okay, I want to go through um, the statement you gave the Cincinnati Police Homicide, um, and that was two days after this incident, correct? Yes, sir. And you were with a lawyer? Yes, sir. Did you go to this, have you gone to the scene since July 19th? I have not, no. No? Just on the view of the scene? Yes, sir. I want to clear something up right now. You intentionally shot him in the head, correct? Sir, I, I fired at him because I thought he was going to kill me. You testified that the only thing you'd see was his head and you fired your weapon. At, you aimed your weapon and fired it at his head, correct? Yes, because the, my body was falling backwards and I was falling low against his driver's door and I was, I was looking up and that's right. the only part of his body I could see. And which way was he facing when you shot him in the head? Uh, he was facing forward in a seat. He was kind of leaning to his, his right, I think. You, you do know this is on video, right? I'm sorry? You know this is on a video, correct? Yes, sir. And do you know if you, how, how low to the door were you? You said you were eye level at the bottom of the door? My, my armpit was on the windowsill of the driver's door, and I was completely backwards. And, and you fired up like this? No, sir. I was, I was on my back, and that's when I reached up through the driver's door, reached up, or through the window, and, and fired. Did you see the coroner testify about the path of this bullet? Yes, sir. That the bullet entered above his ear? Yes, sir. And the path of it went below the other ear? Yes, sir. How is that possible? Because, sir, I, I reached up like this. I have long arms. Okay. Um, In your statement to the police, um, Mr. Matthews, this is um, page 4, line 19, you said he put the vehicle in drive and he just mashed the accelerator. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Is that your testimony today here? Yes, sir. Are you saying that the car immediately began moving forward at a rapid rate of speed? Yes, sir. That was my perception. On page four, line 21, you said, in my hand and my, v my hand and my left arm, it somehow got caught or tangled up in the steering wheel as he's accelerating. That Is that not true? Sir, that was my perception in that, that split moment. I'm, I'm, I'm confused about this term perception. Is it your belief that that's true or not? At that time, that was what I believed was happening, that my arm was somehow caught in or around that steering wheel as he was taking off. Page four, line 22. Um, at this point, I lost my balance and I fell against the car on the left side of my body. I was hanging on the side of the car, his car and kind of facing backwards. Mr. Tenzing, would you not agree if a car is moving and you have your arm in this car, how do you go this way? 
because when I reached in and I, I felt my arm stuck somehow, when he mashed the accelerator and went forwards, my left arm being in there, it, it turned my body to where I was now facing his trunk. The momentum of a car going forward would push you this way. Sir, that's the exact opposite way that you're describing this jury. Well, as he was taking off, my left arm, like I said, was caught, and it, it pulled me, and it rotated. I didn't voluntarily fall on my back. I was rotated to my right. So you felt trapped. You somehow defy the laws of physics and go the opposite way that the car is going. Your Honor, our, our expert testified that if the car was moving forward, he would be going the opposite way he described. Okay, just strike the uh, law of physics comment. And after all these progressions, it would seem to take some kind of time, don't you think? For, for, for all this to happen. That you get stuck, that you're pushed back. Sir, this happened in a, a, a split second. And it was at this point you decided to draw your weapon? When, my arm, when I felt that my arm was, was stuck in that steering wheel, yes, or stuck around there somehow, that's when I felt the need to draw my, my gun. And would you agree that all of this would have happened after you're seen standing at the window of his car with your hand on the roof? Yes, sir, it did happen after that. And from the time your right hand disappears, as it's seen on that roof, your gun appears as it's going into the window in 1.1 seconds. Correct? If that's on the video, sir. Peggy, can you go to slide 131? Slide 131 shows your right hand leaving the roof and the left hand is free. Can you get up and see it? Correct? Slide 141. Your leg shadows on the car shows you you are visibly upright, correct? Slide one fifty, Peggy. Again, the leg shadows are still visible, correct? Slide one sixty one. There. It's one, is it 161? 166. I'm sorry, Peg. You've got the gun. Your hand's not caught. Your left hand's not caught in there. You, well, it's palmed down on him. Is it not? I just want you to tell the truth. Is his hand, is your palm down flat on him? And, the, and you bring the gun through the window. And you're saying right now at this point in time, you're being dragged.
he stayed, so I get, pulled my gun out, and as I'm falling, I'm kind of below the plane of his window. So the only shot I could see that I could take to stop the threat was a head shot. Okay, is it your contention you're being dragged right there? Slide 170, Peg. See the car in the background there? Yes, sir. He hasn't moved. Our video expert said that that car is not moving, and you are placing that gun in the car. The camera in this shot is looking straight in the car at chest level. It doesn't look like you're at the bottom of the window. Judge, I'm going to object here. Please testify. Ask a question, please. Do you believe that looks like you're at the bottom of the window? Yes, sir. I'm 6 foot 3, and as you guys know, I'm walking to the bar. My body hand is looking at the bottom. There's a clue that now I'm looking underneath at his sunroof. Right, but you said you pulled your gun because you're being dragged, okay? The video expert said that that car is not moving. Your left shoulder is well above the lower part of that window, almost to the top of the window. Do you see that? Peggy, go to slide 196. Car still there. Do you see your left? You're clearly the left of Mr. DeBose there. Clearly to the left. This frame is two tenths of a second from you discharging your weapon. The car has not moved, correct? Objection sustained. I'm sorry, the car moved a foot. Peggy, I think that might do my slides. You can have a seat. stated then at that point you continued to he continued to accelerate and that's when I discharged one round and I hit him in the head with that round yes sir what do you believe the likely result of that is of firing towards his head of shooting a bullet in a, head, a man's head um, with a 40 caliber weapon that his threat against me would stop you believed it would kill him, didn't you? I didn't know that, no. I just knew that it would it would stop the threat. It would stop him from, from rocketing forward with his vehicle. And you said after you shot the, the weapon, by some miracle, your hand was free from the vehicle, correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Matthews, um, page 5, line 13. You stated to the officer, so in order for him to pull out, to go, he had to turn left a little bit to get back on the street. As he turned left, that's when I was getting dragged and my hand became free. Did you hear the coroner testify? Yes, sir. Did you hear her say that once his brain stem was severed, he would be unable to do anything like that? Sir, before that happened, I felt his vehicle turning left into me before the shot. 
Page 5, Mr. Matthews, uh, line 24. I fell on my back and I, I slid on my back on the pavement for I don't know how long. How far do you think you were dragged? Uh, I, my guess is 15 to 20 feet. And is there a reason why your uniform isn't in shreds? There are marks on my gun belt in my uniform, sir. Well, the jury can look at those marks back in the jury room, but would you not agree that if you're dragged 20 feet behind a speeding car that you're going to have more damage than that? Sir, I don't know. I was hanging on. I was stuck at first and then hanging on to the vehicle as I was getting dragged. I was, my body was not dragging on the actual concrete itself until I actually fell off the car and, and slid. Both of your backup officers testified in this room that neither saw you dragged. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Peg? Before you do, Peg, you hang on. You need to get up there. Thank you. Um, when you pulled Mr. DeBose over, um, you weren't aware of any drugs, correct? Correct. Alcohol? Correct. No gun? Not that I saw, no. No knife? No, sir. No other weapon except potentially his car? His 3,000 pound car, yes. What are we looking for? Mr. Tenzi, if you want to come up here, you're going to watch this. Did you hear when the accelerator hit? It was after the shot, wasn't it? Play it again, Peggy. You can have a seat. You do realize that none of the eyewitnesses uh, support your story about being dragged, don't you? Uh, sir, they weren't in my position. I, I can't speak for them. Alicia saw it. Do you remember her testimony? I do. She said you weren't dragged. She said you fell backwards. She actually thought you were the one shot. Sir, she was looking through a rearview mirror with her kids in a car up the street. You realize that none of the physical evidence supports this story, too. Correct? I, I believe it does. In what way? There's scuff marks on my uniform. My perception at that time, why would I yell stop, stop to a... A car he started that's sitting car. stationary. He started his car. Uh, yes, allow the witness to answer. My perception was he was taking off before the shot. I would, I would not yell stop, stop to a, a car that was sitting stationary. That was my perception as he was taking off. Well, we know he rolled about a foot, right? Sir, I don't know how far he went before that shot. I just know I was falling backwards and my arm was stuck.
When Mr. Matthews played um, those videos, um, what was the reason for those stops? The initial reason? For the two prior traffic stops? Mm -hmm. uh, both of them had no front license plates on the front of the vehicle, and then after running the rear tag, it came back suspended. But you effectuated a stop based on no front license plates? No, sir. No? That was the initial reason that would draw my attention to a car, and then I'd run the rear license plate, and it came back to someone under a driving suspension, the registered owner. Did you ever win any accommodations or awards as a police officer? Uh, yes, sir. What? Uh, all my training certificates, and I was awarded a, a service certificate at UC for uh, working a security detail for the military on campus. I think you may have forgotten one. Are you familiar with the Exeger report? Uh, somewhat, yes. Were you aware that you led the UC, De UC Police Department in the number of stops, citations, and arrests? Uh, yes. Do you know that that report further says you had the highest racial disparity among those stopped by any other officer, any other UC officer? I didn't realize that, no. What's in the report? Do you know, in terms of writing citations, what percentage of the people that you wrote tickets to were African American? Sir, I have no idea, but a lot of these traffic stops, you cannot see who's driving. They have tinted windows. Half of my shift is at nighttime. I can't see who's driving the car. Would it surprise you that that number is 83.5%? Sir, I don't know what the stats are. Effectively, pursuant to that memorandum of understanding with the University of Cincinnati and Cincinnati Police, um, you're in effect doing urban policing. Would you agree with that? Uh, somewhat, yes. Do you have any sense how offensive that T-shirt you wore that day is to the African-American community? Sir, that t-shirt means nothing to me. I threw it on and, and never looked twice at it, never thought about it. You know, you were talking about your grades before, and I would think you would know the significance of that. Nothing further, Judge. Request for redirect. Ray, would you define yourself as a racist? No, sir. When you made traffic stops, did you pick on African Americans? No, sir, not at all. Did you pick on Asians? No, sir. Pick on Martians? No, sir. Pick on white people? No, sir. Was there any basis for your traffic stop other than a traffic violation that you observed? Nothing other than the actual violation itself. What's your definition of being dragged? My definition is being involuntarily pulled against the surface, uh, against your will. Does distance enter into that definition? Uh, it can, but not necessarily. Thank you. I have another Very good. You may step down, sir, and have a seat back at the council table. You can leave that there, please. Council approach.
Very good. Any rebuttal? No, Your Honor. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is now a good breaking point for the day. You will hear close and charge first thing tomorrow morning. You do need to come back to court prepared with a backpack to be sequestered in the event that you need to be sequestered. You do need to remember the admonitions. Do not discuss this case among yourselves. Do not allow anyone to discuss it with you. Do not form or express an opinion about this case until finally submitted to you. Do not receive any media on this case. Radio, television, internet. Do not post, go on Facebook, anything of this sort. Enjoy your evening. Be back at the meeting place at 8.30 tomorrow morning with a bag packed for tomorrow evening in the event that you need it. Thank you.